Hello everyone, hope you're well. I am so buzzing to film this video for you guys. I am finally coming with a proper, proper wedding update and I am going to be filming a sort of series on wedding planning and all that kind of thing because I did a poll on my Instagram which I'll pop both my personal and my business Instagram handles up here and most of you actually I was quite surprised said that you wanted me to document this on YouTube so this is what we're doing you know I'm gonna listen to what you guys want and this is gonna be a proper proper update with photos going more into detail and yeah I hope you guys will grab your drinks and we can get started. This video is kindly sponsored by Dematica and if you watched my last sort of shorter more generalized update you'll know that I have both been working with Dematica and using Dematica my personalized product for it's coming up to three months now so I really really know and can see and I hope that you all can see the difference that it's made to my skin and I want to give you guys an update. This so is my personalized Dematica box. Dematica essentially are providing people with personalized solutions for their skincare concerns. You fill out a questionnaire, you give them an idea of the main things that you want to focus on in your skin, and they come up with a product just for you. So this is my third box, and I'm just gonna hide my personal formula because it's personal. It comes literally like a prescription item, so it's got all the ingredients and everything that's in there for me. Great thing about the bottle, which if you're into, you know, less waste and all of that, this is 28 days worth of product just for me. The good thing is that I feel like my skin is kind of speaking for itself. I have makeup on right now, so I'm also gonna show you guys what my skin is looking like at the moment. One thing that I put up as my main concern is dullness, and I really hope that you can see that my skin now has this glow to it, that it never used to have before. The marks that I used to have have been fading so much faster. I still get a breakout every now and again, especially the sort of hormonal ones, but the way that they fade and they don't last as long is something that I'm not used to and the only thing I can attest it to is Dermatica. They have a dermatology team which specifically looks after you, so if you ever have any questions about, you know, your journey, you can ask them. And as someone who is so fiercely into skincare, I really wish that I had a product like this when I was a teenager. So whatever your concerns are, whether that be acne, scarring, melasma, pigmentation, they have a personalized formula waiting for you so if you also want to start your own Dermatica journey follow the links below if you use the code Barbara you get your first month for only £2.90 and you get 10% off your second month which is usually £19.99 I know some of you guys have messaged me letting me know that you've started your Dermatica journey and I look forward to knowing how it worked for you and like I said I hope that the you know my skin is sort of talking for itself this glow is something I just never experienced before. So let's go on to talking about, the lighting is really changing you guys, it's such a, it's actually a really bright sunny day but it keeps, keeps going in and out. Let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about weddings. So if you don't first of all follow me on Instagram, please do because that's probably where you get the biggest updates on what I'm doing at the moment, life, all that kind of jazz. This is for my girls who have been following me for years love wedding chat, maybe you're getting married yourself, maybe you got engaged, or you're just really nosy and interested. I always sort of knew that the UK wasn't going to be for me, so just a really quick update, I'm not going to go too much into it, but we are going to be getting married in Italy. For me, there is just something magical about making this a larger memory holiday kind of vibes. So what I think we will be getting value for money wise in Italy we just wouldn't have been able to get in the UK and we probably would have been priced out of many nicer venues and things like that because I'm actually not which I hope this doesn't come as a surprise to people but I am not we are not planning on spending ridiculous amounts on this wedding obviously we want to make this as magical as we can but um like I said I, f I want to feel like I'm also getting the value and the memories from this day so I 
Thank you very much, motorcycle. I come from a region in Italy called Umbria. And I'll be honest with you guys, I sort of had the idea that that's where we were going to get married. If you don't know Umbria, I'll put up like a, a little thing of Italy maybe, is slap bang in the middle of Italy. And it's actually a truffle sort of area. It's known for truffles and, you know, there's beautiful countryside and it's very rustic, which I love. Although we're not getting married super soon, we have got a date in mind and we have finally decided on September 2024. I'm not going to give you guys exact dates, but that's the month and that's the year. And I can finally, finally now start saying, because now we are in January 2023, I can now start saying that I'm getting married next year and people are not gonna be like, oh my God, it feels like so long away. We came up with that date primarily because weather is super important. We had in mind May as another option, but it looks like the weather in that part of Italy in this time of May that we were thinking is a little bit more turbulent and we don't sort of know what it's going to be like. So we have decided on September. We really don't want it to be super warm, although I want it to be a summer wedding. I am not someone who loves the heat, so September kind of gives us a better assurance that it should be okay, especially because we have a longer window that will be there, but um, it shouldn't be sweltering hot. Um, the venue that we've decided on, I don't even think does weddings in June and August. Like that's, that's how hot it gets. So yeah, so date, tick, check. Next venue if you don't follow me on instagram like i said we i did do a little reel and also i did document us going and looking at venues i would urge you if you're getting married do not leave venue hunting to the last minute because they actually do go pretty quickly and even in italy where i thought you know we essentially went looking at wedding venues in december 2022 and i'm getting married in september 2024 some of the venues that we were looking at only had like one week in September, um, one week in May when I was still thinking about May. So I would urge you to, you know, do your research, have a look and just start sort of looking around, maybe home in on the regions that you want to look at if you're going in a broad wedding and then start and having a look at the places. I then set up a, <laughs> this is not my idea. I am not... I wouldn't say I'm disorganized, but I'm also not as organized in my personal life as I probably could be. And I'm also probably more of a, I don't know, visual person rather than like writing stuff down sort of person. So I, you know, something that I never really thought I would do, but really, really helped, which was my partner's idea, is I made a spreadsheet. I don't like spreadsheets. And I, when I was looking at venues and I really homed in on the venues that we liked, or I liked. I put all the details, the Instagram handles, contact details, capacities, um, cost average, and made a list of, I think it was like 10 or so venues so that my partner then could look at them with me and we could go and choose from there the ones that we liked to go and see. I was not about to go and visit 10 venues. I just think sometimes it's, it, it's a bit of an overload to go and have a look at too much. Um, and also, some of the venues I only put there as kind of an idea to see what he would like. Listen, I am definitely going to be the main planner in this. I wasn't going to overwhelm him. Having a spreadsheet, clicking on each venue that, you know, I'd shortlisted, having him say yes or no was just the easiest way of doing it. And I think we luckily homed in on four. We saw that they were within the budget, within the sort of capacity of the sort of thing that we wanted, looks wise etc. I then obviously set about booking in to see them. We went off season so most of the venues were closed or you know didn't have people around which I actually liked because if the venue was going to be beautiful in December I would hope that it would be even more beautiful in September when it's you know being kept and there are people and it feels warmer. Um, we were really unlucky when we went to Italy it was such bad weather i honestly cannot remember going there and having such bad weather um it was like torrential downpours it was freezing so we actually probably got to see them all at their worst i'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the ones that we shortlisted so i'm actually filming this bit after i finish the video just because i can tend to ramble a little bit and i want to give a very concise overview of what we're thinking with the wedding so 
we are thinking up to 60 guests including ourselves we are thinking of three days of main wedding events so first day sort of a rehearsal dinner not quite sure how formal it's going to be but rehearsal dinner everybody who's come along gets to know each other um, a really nice time for everybody to mingle maybe a little bit more informally who doesn't you know know each other second day wedding big day and then last day some sort of pizza party pool party um because our venues will definitely have a pool whichever or whoever of our guests would like to stay longer also has the capacity and the ability to stay so you know we're probably thinking of people let's say staying wednesday to wednesday that kind of thing um who wants to come and then possibly having the wedding on a weekend um to try and make it easy for everybody so that's what we're looking at wedding wise in case i you know nothing of this makes sense good thing is i had four different venues first one first one had a capacity to sleep 14 which when you have a guest list of 50 to 60 that would have meant that the majority of our guests being you know family extended family and friends would have had to seek accommodation elsewhere but luckily a lot of these places have been having weddings for years and years and years so they have you know um, affiliations with other places um like villas or hotels and things like that so that wasn't a problem it just would have meant logistically if we would have all have wanted to stay or you know let's say 30 people or 20 people would have wanted to stay for a week there would have been a certain amount of people that would be missing out and would have to be traveling in every day to see us if that was the main villa where everybody would be staying so that was the main con of this particular venue venue two all of these have pools by the way Venue two, beautiful country house, um, renovated into, you know, lots of single rooms. It's not a hotel, it's a villa. Um, again, with a pool, beautiful courtyard, capacity, all of these to get married on site. Venue number three, villa again, or country house. Um, capacity to sleep, I cannot remember, but I will put something here. Has a beautiful orangery. Um, again, great capacity to get married, beautiful views. And then wedding venue number four, which we decided to go with, which is a hotel. Um, capacity to sleep, I think up to 40. Has a restaurant on site, a little bit more equipped to have, you know, a larger amount of guests um, on site. Um, it being, you know, a hotel and just a different kind of level of service in terms of, you know, cleaning of the rooms every day, things that you wouldn't necessarily get with villas and country houses. Um, obviously, if we went down the villa route, we would have to hire a cook, all those kind of things. I'm wondering so, how many of you have lost at this point. If I haven't lost you, you can write, write down September 2024 or something cute about wedding and then I'll know that I haven't lost you. So let's talk about wedding venue numero uno. Wedding venue numero uno was probably either top of my list or second of my list. And it was a beautiful renovated church. This one was the one that had the capacity for 14. If I tell you this place has the best reviews, it, other than no other venue that I saw had the kind of reviews that this place has. Also, I will leave the details of the ones that I haven't gone for down below. And I am going to be cheeky and I'm not going to reveal my personal wedding venue, but I will leave venue details down below just because I hope it helps other people. And, you know, even though I didn't go with them, they might appeal to you. And it was just outside of Perugia and, you know, it was relatively easy to get to. We obviously hired a car to drive around just because it was so much easier. And it was beautiful smaller than what i expected i'll be honest because i was thinking of logistically being the main villa renting it for a week having then let's say another 10 people maybe potentially coming to the villa every day for breakfast lunch and all that kind of thing for a week that wasn't the wedding so i was also thinking like how am i going to house people here how am I going to have everybody fit in this room or on the sofa or whatever? And it just was proving a little bit like I was logistically thinking mm, it's going to be a tighter squeeze. And they also had a wine, um, a vineyard on site. So there was literally a little separate building where you could go and have wine tastings. And it, there was something very homey about it. Um, but at the back of my mind, although I still loved it and I was like, yeah, we could, we could still totally have the wedding here. The capacity and the sort of the fact that I wouldn't be able to have everybody there for the whole the whole period was a big negative for me. Second venue. This 
venue, when you see the Instagram and when you see the um, website is to die for, there is just something about this building that um, has all this greenery on it and a gorgeous courtyard that just really drew me to it. It's a little bit more spenny, like a little bit more expensive. So it was on the higher side of maybe what we would have potentially wanted to spend, but it was gorgeous. And the nice thing was this venue you could rent for less days. So it wasn't like you had to rent it for a week. So we could have definitely made it work. And it also had the larger capacity for you know, guests. So I think it was 40-ish or 37 or something like that. Um, again, great area, really nice, easy to get to, all that kind of jazz. Um, the lady who showed us around was so nice, as was the other one. And um, the rooms, the only thing I would say is the rooms themselves where people would be staying were very grand and very, you know, very well done as well. Maybe needed a little bit more updating. I didn't love the communal areas. They weren't really to my taste. Um, whereas in the first venue, you know, the whole decor was so my taste. Um, and it's very small things that when you go and see venues, you'll notice that it's either going to be things that you can compromise on or things that you can't visualize yourself in. Like I couldn't really visualize myself in the, in the common areas. They weren't really to my tea. Um, although they, the, the venue was very large and grand. It just, there was something about it that I wasn't, connecting with another thing which was a bit weird was they had an apartment on the site where someone had bought this apartment and could stay basically in your venue so the courtyard that you would have the wedding there would be someone potentially you know because it's his it's his apartment he can stay there whenever he wants he could be basically staying there when you're having a wedding and it just it, there was something very disjointed about it i didn't like the fact that we'd have to be worrying and I know what I'm like and I'm such a people pleaser and I would be worrying about this one person that I don't even know that has an apartment on the site of my wedding. So that already was something that we we talked about and actually funnily enough, I was very lucky because my partner and I both got vibes from all the venues that were quite similar. So that was beautiful but we kind of already sort of ticked it off the list for no real reason, just it wasn't for us. And then the third venue, which again, I'm showing you guys, I'm going to be maybe not as favorable in talking about it. And I feel really bad about this because the, the gentleman showing us around was so nice, but it just, you know, like the whole Instagram versus reality thing, which I think is why you should definitely go and see venues if you can. If you logistically are able to go and travel and see the venue, let's say you're getting married in France, like go. It, it, I just think it's so worth it. I found some really cheap tickets, you know, it's something that you, you can do in a really quick, let's, we did it in a weekend, um, it's worth, it's worth the money, trust me, even if you come out of it not having found the wedding venue of your dreams, you will be, you know, you'll thank yourself because this venue looks lovely on Instagram, maybe more, um, I want to say commercial than the other venues, um, more catered to expats and sort of especially UK weddings, American weddings, that kind of thing. Um, but still, I wanted to kind of get that idea because the gentleman who deals with the weddings was so organized, uh, true Virgo, you know, his spreadsheet was amazing. He sent me, there was something about it that I still wanted to, to see, but the rooms weren't really up to scratch, um, not to my taste at all. Um, and there wasn't a warmth that some of the other venues had. Although, like I said, the gentleman showing us around was so nice. Um, and you know, maybe some people are not as fussy about how things look aesthetically. And you know, you're happy with the basics of, you know, there's lots of great rooms for people to stay. The actual wedding areas were really beautiful. Like they had an orangery, which none of the other venues that I had had, which appealed to me. So you could have your dinner in a, in a really beautiful orangery. Um, and maybe it had more of a, not castle vibes, but it was more medieval vibes, which wasn't maybe what I was looking for. I know obviously there's a lot of ladies who want to, or people who want to get married in castles and things like that. That's not really to my taste. Um, but it had more that kind of, I've gone really orange. It had more of that kind of look to it. And then lastly, um, our venue, I'm not going to share too many photos and things like that. Do you know what? We weren't even going to go to this venue because it was slightly further out of the area that I was originally looking at, still in, you know, Umbria, still in that region. 
but it was about an hour's drive from where we were and we were tired it was pouring with rain um driving wasn't easiest which you know my partner was driving and he did really well so I, I was quite tired and he was like no we're here you know let's just go and see it and funnily enough it had actually been one of the number one venues for me to look at um that I loved so Although I was like, do you know what? I think venue number one is great. I think let's go for that. He was like, no, let's go see it. And as soon as I walked in, there was just something about the venue. And it just ticked, ticked, ticked so many boxes. So it is a hotel, as I said, which was not what I was sort of maybe first drawn to, but it doesn't feel like a hotel. Um, although every guest will get, you know, a set of keys, they have, you know, a fridge and more of a hotel, like a boutique hotel vibe, it, it didn't have that feeling. Um, not that there's anything wrong with a hotel, but there's a warmth that you get from seeing a country house room that you wouldn't normally with a hotel. The other thing that really drew us to it was the fact that it being a hotel, we could very easily, which is what we're going to be doing, we are going to be hiring out the whole venue for three days, which is our wedding, you know, our wedding plans and our wedding days. And then whoever would like to stay longer can then go and book rooms for longer. So obviously we're just deciding, do we want to stay before the wedding or do we want to stay more after or have a kind of in between, which we probably will. And um, yeah, our guests can essentially decide and then we are not financially tied to a venue for let's say a week and then people, you know, drop out or people don't want to come then it's, you know, whoever wants to stay can stay, whoever doesn't want to stay doesn't have to stay. And also, we have less of a, a need to have people housed outside. The majority of our guests can stay inside. There's an on-site restaurant, um, so that's so easy. You know, makes breakfast easy. If we had to hire a cook where we would have maybe potentially in the villas, um, you know, everyone would have had maybe more of a set time to come for breakfast. And there's a lot of logistics that you have to think about that are specific in the details and I think make the details. So not everyone's gonna wanna get up at a certain time for breakfast and have, you know, have to come down. So it just leaves a bit more of an open, um, it makes it come more comfortable also for our guests, but also for us where I'm not feeling like I have to put people out. I can really just imagine us there. Um, it has a couple of cons, so um, it doesn't have like a spe spectacular view. Some of the wedding venues we went to see had these gorgeous views, but I'm I'm not that fast. It's not I'm not going to get married for a view. I love just the the general um, look of the venue, the rusticness of it, and the rooms are all very comfortable, which was great. There's a lot of space, but it doesn't feel too grand as maybe venue number two did. Um, and I just feel like it would fit everybody in really well. There's a great pool and it's also not too far from, you know, local amenities and things like that, which is great. Um, and I think the main thing is I can just picture us there. I can really, really picture us all in the common areas, the rooms. I can just imagine that it's gonna be a really, really good fun. I'm gonna be giving you more updates and things like that, don't worry. We have found our wedding planner, which is great. I can get more into that side of things later on if you guys want because She's fantastic and um, she will be looking after us for the three whole days of the wedding. So for me, I knew that if I was gonna go down the wedding planner route, I was gonna look at a, at a wedding planner who has great reviews. I mean, when I say great, her reviews are fantastic. You know, not knowing many people who've got married in Italy, that was such a big thing. I wanted to find someone who has has a backing to her especially because you know wedding planners it's not a cheap thing and it's but it's a cost to me that i think is really valuable especially when you're planning a wedding abroad so i'm sure you guys would love to meet her because i think potentially she will she will want to share a few things with you guys so that'll be really fun don't forget to check out dematica if you haven't so already follow the links below and you can use my code for your first month of £2.90 and then 10% off your second month which is normally £19.99. Let me know how your own journeys go and um, I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot more wedding chats. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this uh, video, like it because that will let me know that you guys want more and I will see you all soon. Take care.